Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Australian Market Preview for Wednesday, 30 December. My name is Carl Kaplingwa. I'm the market analyst at Think Markets, and it is a pleasure to be with you with uh, really just two more sessions to go. One and a half, as we'll have an abbreviated session tomorrow for 2020. What a year it was. We'll talk about what a last 24 hours in the markets it was after we talk about the Think Markets difference, which is substantial. You get $8 flat rate trades, your own holder identification number, uh, unlimited phone support and no hidden platform fees or subscription fees. So four fantastic reasons to choose us for your next ASX share trade. And I've got 10 more for you until December 31. So literally tomorrow, uh, get in now and get your first 10 trades on us. So you need to get to the website, download the Think Trader app and get trading. The agenda for this morning, it'll be a quick one because we don't have any broker moves as usual and no stock news to speak of uh, breaking this morning. So we'll just do the quick COVID update, have a look at what happened in the, on the markets in the last 24 hours and have a look at some charts. Okay, COVID situation, uh, the curves are still heading in the right direction for Europe and the US, but off uh, disturbingly high basis. So you would hardly say that this issue is going to go away anytime soon. And really, that's all we're looking for here. Um, are we getting re relief from the situation? Uh, is it getting worse? Well, it's getting slightly better. So I think markets will take some heart, but still be concerned about the overall levels. Having a look at how local markets traded yesterday, we had a pretty good gain on the back of you know similar gains in the US. We didn't quite get uh, to the same uh, degree of gains as them, but uh, nonetheless, a step in the right direction, up about half a percent. For most of those indices, technology, the star there up 2.12% as Afterpay shone once again. Uh, materials up about 0.3%, lagging slightly, one would suggest. Property trusts also up about 1%. We had a look at, in Think Technical, we had a look at some sectors. And we did say information technology and property actually look quite good. And utilities missing out. We said utilities looked pretty terrible. So I get on to the market news section of the website and check out that Think Technical from yesterday. Uh, we uh, Coincidentally, we said that the Nikkei looked the best out of any market in the world. And that was clearly the best, up 2.66%. Uh, Shanghai down about half a percent, Hang Seng up about one. In the US overnight, they got off to a pretty good start as we'll see when we get to the charts, but could not sustain that. Uh, closing pretty much around their lows and down for the session. Uh, and you look at that and you go, well, it's, it's not a terrible decline, is it just 0.2%, but it's more about the shape of the trading session, which gives us our cues for the day. And I don't think we're going to like that very much, nor will we like the 7% jump in the volatility index. So some fears coming into this year end close. The FTSE had a good session, though I'm guessing something to do with Brexit on that one, up about 1.6%. Uh, otherwise, in Europe, it was pretty quiet. Have a look at some of the base metals, and they did take a bit of a hit. Aluminium, the worst there, down 2%. Um, copper, a, a far milder decline in the London Metals Exchange, but it was down a bit more on the in New York at 0.6 of a percent. Zinc down 3% in London. Tin managing to scrape out a gain, and I'm going to say really the only gain on the London Metals Exchange. The big news this morning are the gyrations in the iron ore price. So we've got a 5.5% a fall on the Shanghai exchange uh, where iron ore is traded and we had a 3.4 percent gain in us dollar prices overnight so they are heading in the opposite directions i've double checked and rechecked those numbers and i'm quite certain they're correct so one of those prices will have to reconcile i would suggest either uh, the chinese iron ore price is wrong or the uh, us dollar price is wrong i'm going to say that the us dollar price will catch up to the chinese price because the chinese price tends to lead i mean we kicked off uh, trading for Wednesday, uh, you know, in this trade in this um, time zone. Uh, so a little bit disturbing there, and that will no doubt be reflected in some of the uh, material sector stocks. Otherwise, it was a pretty quiet session for gold and silver. West Texas crude oil regained about 0.8 of a percent from its uh, prior sessions falls, and a, a stronger night overnight for the Australian dollar, as more broadly speaking, the US dollar declined. Uh, US bond yields about 0.94, of a percent at the moment, they edged slightly higher. Have a look at some of the charts now, we can see the uh, impact of that higher open, and then the falls during the day and the close uh, almost on the low, so we ended up with this 
sort of bar and if you were going to draw a candlestick it would be a filled in so a black candle I know I'm drawing in red uh, and it would look something like that but either way it's not a great sign and not when you're seeing them after a record uh, close and it, well, it's not quite engulfing so it hasn't quite engulfed the previous previous bar but not a great sign when you consider we're at highs you know we've had a record high things should be as positive as they can be and you get a candle like that so that's disappointing I'm not saying hey that's the end of the lot it just means we're more likely I think to go down in the next session than to go up and that uh, causes us to start to look for support levels uh, in theory there would be one there but I'm going to say it's not because we've closed above it um, I don't believe that there will be one there because we've already taken it out so you have to look downstairs and I've, I've kept the lines on this level because I think that is the key level here and as long as we stay above that we're still very much in a short-term uptrend we are very much in a long-term uptrend also and you have to maintain alongside bias but that's probably say more medium term in the short term hey tomorrow probably will be a down session and it's reflected also in the Nasdaq its support zone is around here 12,006 to 12,005 happy to maintain a long sign bias until then but caution is growing based upon the last candle and our S&P ASX 200 SPY futures that's the share price index futures they certainly reflect those moves got off to a pretty good start and as US Markets opened high and then proceeded to fall pretty much for the whole session, as did our futures. They ended up closing at 66.06, and that's off a high of 66.55 and a low of 65.94. So number one, we're looking at the shape, and the shape is definitely not good. And we're looking at the relative close to the highs and the lows, and you know uh, that also is not good either so I would think we're going to struggle uh, the futures are pointing to it looks like quite a big discount when you look here but they have been trading around about a 76 point discount anyway uh, not enough time in this session to go through the reason why but it'll be to do with expected dividends and the, the price of uh, time and things like that bottom line is it's pointing to about a 0.3 percent decline in the index today and because of the shape of this chart I wouldn't suggest we'd get that back so we we may see a little move down here and I hope it doesn't occur but uh, I think it will uh, we're going to move back into lower peaks for the first time in a very long time on the local market and the problem is we already have lower troughs okay so that's a question mark and the troughs part of the equation is already in place uh, because the last trough here at 65.85 is lower than the one prior to that at 66.32 so with lower peaks and lower troughs uh, we move into a medium term downtrend in the price action uh, and that would lead me to become more cautious and more neutral on the market despite the fact that the uh, moving averages are still heading up don't forget that price action is the fastest way to read the trend in the market moving averages tend to slow things down so uh, we will take note of the moving average and move to a more neutral stance I think of the short term longer term though the trend is still up and happy to maintain that uh, overall long-term bias but if you've got some short-term positions I think you have to expect that the Australian market is going to mess you around a little over the next few trading sessions having a look at some of the dividends coming out anything with a zero is today and there are a bunch of them I'll let you press pause on that slide this slide here is the next uh, 20 or so there's the third one and there's the next one down so press pause and see if your stock is in there or stock of interest for you having a look at the economic data today uh, we are going to have the Chinese manufacturing and services PMIs coming out now that stands for purchasing managers index it's just a, a gauge a survey that they send out to the key personnel within certain companies uh, that tend to cover quite a few companies actually so it's very broad based and they you know ask questions about how they how they're going based upon those responses they collate an index and we're expecting from the previous level of 52 for the manufacturing PMI to 52.1 I should say to come down to 52 and from 56.4 to come down to uh, 56.3 and then this evening in the USA we'll have our usual weekly unemployment claims we're expecting uh, those to rise to 830,000 for the uh, prior week from 803 and that's really it 
Okay, all of the other updates I mentioned, the Think Technical update, that's in the market news section, as will the rest of the updates that come out today. You can follow me, all the Think Markets handles are there on Twitter. On Jan 4, we will return to the usual programming for the Monday Think Tank. So you will need to go online and register for those. And then you will also need to register, if you wish, to get on to the Think Learning series First one, introduction to technical analysis, and we'll be talking about price action and how to read it, how to understand it. And then the week after, we'll be doing Ask the Experts, where you get to tune in and ask me about the stocks you're interested in. The disclaimer before I leave you says that everything we've discussed this morning is very general in nature. Before you act upon it, you should consider whether it's suitable within your own personal circumstances. Otherwise, give us a call or consult the website for further details. Thanks for joining me this morning. All the best for your trading. Bye-bye for now.